Welcome, everybody. It is Pentecost Sunday, not just here in Jackson, but all over the world. Many of you, whether you are in Zoom or whether you are here in the sanctuary, have worn your red or your pink or your yellow or some sort of flame color if you were able to do that. That helps us just remember the tongues of fire that were visible over people's heads. And we will be reading about that when we visit the scripture this morning. But first, welcome. Welcome to Pentecost. Welcome to the birthday of the church. We have a few announcements for the life of our community. I'm going to ask for help, at least with one of them. But let's begin by saying that yesterday's plant sale, the kickoff of the plant sale, because the decision of the mission team is to let it continue, I believe, through Memorial Weekend. We still have lovely plants tucked under our stairs or just outside the entranceway. And if you want to help find a home for a plant, we want all of our plants to have a forever home, just like pets, then um, please feel free to come and gather up what would be beautiful in your home or your yard. You can leave a donation of any size in the little blue bucket under the stairs, and we will appreciate it. But already we know that we raised over $1,700, which was a great success. And, you know, again, it was like our sec it was a reunion plant sale because last year we were all getting out of our houses for the first time and so happy to be out in the parking lot. And that happened again yesterday. A lot of dogs visiting, a lot of people, and a lot of plants went home. The beneficiaries of that plant sale are three different causes at a local, national, and international level that work to help provide shelter um, in, in those different regions. So Honduras Hope is receiving funds. Uh, there's a ministry at the border receiving funds of the US. And then here locally, the way station will be one of the beneficiaries as well. So we give thanks for the mission team's energy to continue this plant sale every year for everybody else that grows roots and shoots and brings them to the plant sale to donate. And all the people that come and show up and can imagine that something green or flowering in their yard or their home is also planting the seed of hope somewhere in the world. So we thank you for that lovely event. We also are planning with, with the great creative leadership and energy of our young choir director, Billy, who's probably the only person that I could think of that would single-handedly take on this idea, are planning a golf fundraiser. And what I need help with is the exact date. OK, so Billy, if you're here, I'd love to hear from you. Yeah, so good morning, everyone. So the JCC Choir is organizing a golf tournament at the Wentworth Golf Club on June 29th. That's a Tuesday from and um, tea times will be from nine o'clock to 1130. Um, but essentially, the tournament starts at nine o'clock. Um, the tournament will be um, if you've been to a golf tournament, it is not a shotgun start golf tournament. It is pre-selected. Uh, tea times, we will let you know um, on June 24th, June 25th of your tea time. But generally, yeah, the tea times will start anywhere from 9 to 1130. Um, forms for registration will be out, hopefully, officially by Tuesday or Wednesday. I will make sure that they will be sent out via email and also that there will be forms in the church as well. And all the information you need for submitting payment and as well submitting the registration will be included on the registration sheet. As well, if you don't mind, I'm going to put my email address in the chat. So that if you have any questions or even like to help with getting sponsors or have any um, sponsors or donations you would like to make as well to the tournament, you can um, reach out to me and I can give you the proper information for that as well. So um, let me put that down. But I think that's all that I have for the, tor uh, for the tournament. Billy, can you just clarify for everyone um, the cause that's being supported by the fundraiser? Yeah, totally. So this is a fundraiser tournament for the JCC Choir. This can be um, 
the donations um, will be used towards music selection, um, diversifying the music activities that not just even the choir um, will do, but even getting more involvement with the youth choir, youth music projects, or even working towards either refining or helping um, repair any instruments or any other musical accessories that we have in the church. Possibly if we get enough money, it would be even nice to even start make possibly a handbell choir or anything of the sort. So big goals, but possibly something to build over time. Initially, it is mainly for choir music and other music activities within the church, though. Billy does not dream small. Let's just clarify that, right? He, he joined us right before COVID hit. Thankfully, Alan was already like a big part of our family, and, and then J Billy joined us. The music of these two and the voices of our choir spread out across the country joining us to be our choir continue to be a gift and as billy's demonstrating right now he's filled with the holy spirit because his dreams are not small they are big and guess what we can do it mm -hmm. and it'll be fun too totally thank you billy yeah thank you Are there any other announcements for the life of the church that I have missed? If so, um, we're, we're, we're using different devices today. I really can't see your raised hands. You're going to have to unmute yourself and say something if you want to share anything. Or there's nobody here in the sanctuary. Oh, Meg. Meg's got something. Do you want to, can you use the microphone, Meg, so people can hear you, please? Thank you. We have a portable mic here so that folks that are in the sanctuary can be heard by everybody that's also in Zoom. If you press and hold, it'll turn green. There you go. Go ahead. Um, I'm just excited that my sister Kate, who joined our church virtually um, last winter from the West Coast, will be here in person next Sunday. And um, I'll be bringing her to church. She wanted to make sure she was here in time for the Sunday service. It's her first time in this church in probably 20 years. Um, so she'll be here, and we're going to have a little punch and cookie reception afterwards. So those who only know a virtual member will actually get to see her live. Okay, that's Sunday. And it's another inauguration of our hospitality tradition. We're getting closer to being able to do that. We might make it like a once a month activity. So this is a good way to celebrate. We had Pojen a few weeks ago. Now we're going to have Meg. So if you want to be in the company of others, you can come join us. We are going to now begin our worship by listening to Heather Pearson, who's going to sing for us one breath at a time. And the whole focus of today is wind spirit and breath. So even this gathering song is to help you focus on Pentecost and the presence of the Holy Spirit. So please go ahead, place your feet on the floor or on the ground if you're outside, relax your body, take a deep breath, open your hands and listen to Heather's voice guide you. I'm learning how to love I'm learning how to give. I'm learning how to trust. Uh -oh. you lost this. I'm, I'm learning how to give. I'm learning how to trust. I'm learning how to live. One breath at a time. One, two, three. 
also can't tell what the experience of people in Zoom may always be. Um, we continue, we're still working on Wi-Fi here. We have a better signal, still not perfect, and occasionally we have a little bit of a hiccup. And guess what? The hiccup in the words was always, I'm learning how to trust. It would stop right there for just a little second, and then it would pick up and we get the beauty of the whole thing. So hmm, maybe that's a message for all of us. Maybe it's a message for me. Trust the Wi-Fi. We are gathered in the presence of God. We are gathered and filled with the breath of the Holy Spirit, surrounded by the wind and the being of God's love. Today is Pentecost. We gather in so many ways, but one of the ways that we focus is by starting out our worship with the call to worship. You can find the words on your screen, or if you're here in the sanctuary, you will find them in your bulletin. Come Holy Spirit and ignite our hearts with joy and confidence. Come Holy Spirit and fill us with the power of the rushing wind that we may faithfully serve you in all that we do. Come, Holy Spirit, and be with us today. Hold us to boldly embody love alive in the world. And yes, if there was a stumble, that was me. The, the, the Spirit is definitely at work today, and it's, I'm going to be humbled all day long, I can tell. We gather now through prayer. We gather whether we are in a virtual place far from here or comfortably at home or whether you are here bodily in this sanctuary. Your prayer travels all distances and your prayer reaches the ears of God who is tuned to hear you and to respond. We begin always with prayers of concern and then we move to prayers of joy and celebration. I have two prayers that I wish to lift up today before others are added. One of these is that Sasha, if anyone is not aware, did go in for emergency surgery down in Concord on Friday. Um, this is in addition to all the other complexities that she has been so courageously and feistily managing. I believe that she remains stable following that surgery, but she will be in the hospital for a period of time. No? Say, Sue, go ahead. She's home. Oh, well. All right. Okay. <laughs> well. Yeah, so um, I guess we're going from joy to happiness right in the same little prayer request. So Sasha continues to need our prayers because her body is full of surprises. And last week she was here visiting us, and then this week she was in the hospital, and now she's home again, and that is good news. Sasha also asked that we would hold her granddaughter Mary in prayer. Mary continues to live with a heart condition that she's had since she was born. Mary is 11. and We'll be looking at different possible procedures. All of these are life-saving procedures. None of them are casual. And so what's coming up, however it happens, will be a big deal. And for Mary, for her family, for Sasha, who loves her grandchildren, all of them, each of them is precious to her. But we ask particularly for prayers for Mary's heart when we do our body prayer today. And prayers for Kevin. And Kevin is here with us. And so we're going to, do we dare try the microphone again? Alan's going to give Kevin the microphone. We're going to try to be inclusive here and let people use the microphone in the sanctuary so those who are in Zoom can hear. Can you hear me? Yes, <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Uh -huh. um, prayer for me um, that. I will know the right answer and people will help me figure out the right answer. 
because sometimes I just don't know. And um, prayer that God will help me to forgive others that have hurt me or lied to me, and that I'll forgive myself. And that um, prayer for our country and for our president and vice president and the military. And prayer for um, prayer for our church. I love our church. And I wanted to just say what I was grateful for. Should I say it now? Or? No, wait on that one, Kevin. Okay, thank you. But that was a beautiful meditation. I hope you attuned yourself to what Kevin shared because here is somebody through whom the Spirit speaks. Are there others here in the sanctuary that have a prayer of concern you wish to raise up this morning? And then we look through Zoom to see if there's anyone that I, I, I'm actually incapacitated. I can't see you if you raise a hand. So, um, I'm going to ask you to unmute yourself if there's anyone asking for a prayer in Zoom. Do any of the co-hosts see somebody with a raised hand that needs to be unmuted? No. Today? Nope. Okay. Thank you, co-hosts. So there are other hidden gifts behind the scenes, people who are helping shepherd us through this hybrid experience and taking care of those in Zoom. Thank you. Then we turn to prayers of gratitude. We will pray the body prayer celebrating both things, but I want to acknowledge that Jan Brodel is here with us today visiting and that by itself is a celebration. She's waving at everybody. <laughs> you can't see her, but the sanctuary can see her. She's in her red and she's waving. And last week she was telling us about Barry, um, but this, we have a celebration of seeing you, just as we had the celebration yesterday of seeing so many others gathered in our plant sale. Fun to have you. Other prayers of celebration here in the sanctuary. Kevin has one, so go. we're going to give Kevin the microphone. Is this for grateful? Yes. Yeah, um, go for I'm it. I'm grateful for our church and Reverend Gail and Chris and their wonderful family and um, all the members of our church. And um, I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to deal with certain things if it wasn't for our church and the United Church of Christ. And um, this is my church and my home and to me it's the best church in the world thank you kevin other prayers of gratitude or celebration in the sanctuary cheryl is here too i should say that we're happy cheryl's here as well by the way um i'm just grateful to be here and to hear and feel the organ music mm. in person and to uh -huh. see everybody that's right. If I look to my right and my left, I, I, I should never take for granted who's here because there are people here who have just started coming back. Cheryl, I think it's your first day inside the church and it's Jan's back. But every person that comes into the sanctuary, we're glad for you. And for every person in Zoom, we are grateful for you. And my daughter's here too, by the way. I did out her just now. You can't <laughs> see her if you're out in Zoom, but she's here and everybody here in the sanctuary can see her. Other prayers of gratitude or celebration in the sanctuary? I, I just Alan have, has one. I, I have one. Um, I, I've been so thankful that um, I, I've been in multiple bands and um, I have a lot of friends that we just started a new band. So I'm very grateful for that. So <laughs> All right, a new band. <laughs> well, that's, that's the Holy Spirit, the so wind and the music. <laughs> new band. All right. Excellent. We look forward to... Um, the fruits of your recordings and your creativity to be shared with us. Now we're going to turn to Zoom. So again, I'm going to ask the co-host to sort of scan and see, is there anybody in Zoom that wants to unmute yourself and share something that you're celebrating or that you're grateful for? I'm just Cindy. grateful for the um, plant sale because uh, I now have several pretty things that I'm looking at out there and um, 
I think my daughter, I just highlighted her, the fact that there's still some plants there and um, she's going to stop again on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So Arden's giving joy for the plant sale and the, what, the beauty that will be in her yard and her daughter who's going to be on wheels picking them up for her. Nice. Other prayers of gratitude or celebration. And Jeanette or Sandy, can you just double check and tell me if there's somebody that I haven't called on that needs to share? I think we're all set. All right. Then I'm going to ask first that we gather in prayer and we'll move into the body prayer and then into the Lord's prayer. So for the length of this prayer, please place your hands on the part of your body that you seek healing for, whether for yourself or for another. And if you don't have somebody you're already praying for, then pray for Mary's heart. Well, holy God, you are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the word that was spoken over the waters, the word that walked among us, and the breath that fills us enlivens us and gives us both comfort and creativity. You are the love that binds us. And so as we place our hands on this body beneath our palms, we are praying for the body of your church whose birthday we celebrate today. We pray for each other's bodies because our bodies are the body of your church. And we know that in 1 Corinthians, your gifts were poured out on all of us. Just as in Pentecost, we saw tongues of flame. Those gifts have been passed down across generations. And sometimes we don't even understand the gifts that have been given to us that we see in others. But those gifts are shared among us and they fill us. And when we feel beneath our palms the warmth of our own bodies, you remind us that when we gather as your people, we are gathered as members living in your body, strengthened by our diversity, unified by belonging to you, God's self. And we know that through you, when one of us hurts, you will cry out and you will help all of us become part of the healing. And when we are joyful and we sing and we laugh, you will be part of the celebration and you will gather us up in that joy. You bind us together. And when we lay our hands on our own bodies, we are touching also the body of others who need your love, your compassion, your justice, all over the world. When we pray for each other's bodies, hearts, and minds, we are praying for the hurting and the healing, the living and the dying and the resurrected body of Christ, which is all of us, you and me, who belong to each other as we belong to God's self. The church was born on a day like this, by gatherings of people who came to know the Spirit. May we feel the Spirit move through our bodies, through our palms, through our hands, into our tongues and our minds and our hearts and our lives. And now we release our hands and we open them in prayer and we lift up our voices to you. And I ask that if you're in Zoom, you'll unmute so we can hear your voices raised up with those who are gathered here in the sanctuary as we pray together the Lord's Prayer, saying, Our Father, Lord who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy, be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come. Thy will be, thy will be done, done on earth, earth as it, as is, it in is in heaven. Give us, give us this day, day our, our daily bread, and, and forgive, us, forgive our us our sins as we forgive those, those who sin against, against, against us. Lead us not, us not not in temptation, deliver us but deliver us from evil. evil. For thine, For thine is, is the kingdom, the power, power 
glory and glory forever. Glory forever. Amen. So, Alan, Sarah's going to sing for us. So we have a special gift. This is one of those spirit moments where uh, Sarah, doctor, is going to sing a solo for us a cappella. You can hide there. Yeah. So nobody's going to really see her. You, you won't see her on camera. And the folks in the sanctuary um, are going to hear her just the way you do. They're going to hear her voice. So you can just. I keep fighting voices in my head that say I'm not enough. Every single lie that tells me I will never measure up. Am I more than just a sum of every high and every low? Remind me who I am just Remind me once again just who I am because I need to know. Ooh, you say I am love when I can't feel a thing. You say I am strong when I think I am weak. You say I am hell when I am fine. And when I don't belong, you say I am yours, I believe, I believe what you say of me. The only thing that matters now is everything you think of me. And do I find my worth and do I find my identity? Ooh. You say I am love when I can't feel a thing. You say I am strong when I think I am weak. You say I am half when I am falling short. And when I don't belong, oh, you say I am yours. What you say of me, oh, I believe. Oh, the excitement of trying to turn off the microphone, which doesn't ever seem to want to go off. Oh, we got it off. Yes. So um, thank you, Sarah. That was, <laughs> that was really beautiful. And she had to start it like three times. So thank you. Thank you. So we receive gifts that are surprising. We receive the courage to go through the unexpected moments that would trip us up, except we have the courage to look at each other and know that we are loved and to continue to use our voices to share love with each other when it would be so easy to turn away and to stop. Please follow along with me now as we read from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 7 and verses 12 through 18, this is the story that is the birth of the Christian movement as its own religion. It wasn't started that way, but it became that identity. And here is where it begins. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each one of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews 
from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native tongue of each. All were amazed and they were perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? Others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the 11, raised his voice and addressed them, men of Judea, women of Judea, and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters will prophesy and your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women in those days, I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy. So ends the reading. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The festival at which the people in Jerusalem were gathered was the festival of Shavuot. It was the festival of harvest, the gathering in of the first fruits, the gathering in of everything that had been planted. It followed Passover and it was called Pentecost because it happened 50 days after Passover. And then the wind appeared and the Holy Spirit appeared to the people gathered in a little room. These were people who were still trying to make sense of what had happened after Easter because Christ had appeared to them beyond crucifixion again and again and again, often with food sitting down to eat fish with them, breaking bread with them, meeting them on the lake shore, addressing their fears, coming to people through locked doors, meeting them on the road, calling out to them when they couldn't find a way to fish and their needs had to be met. Again and again, Christ appeared across all the gospel stories there are these stories of Christ coming to the ones he loved. But by the time of this story in Acts, he has left them for the final time. And whatever will happen is in the hands of these people who are gathered in this room, trying to make sense. His mother Mary is there. The 11 are there. Hope healing, love, possibility sits in the hands of these gathered people. Imagine you're sitting in a small room with people that you trust in a time of uncertainty, and then the uncertainty becomes the rumble of a wind that could shake your house to its foundations and overturn everything. These are people for whom the temple has been knocked down twice by conquerors and it's being rebuilt again in their day. They have seen their nation taken apart, dismantled. They have been forcibly removed more than once from their land to faraway places. They have lived in other nations on other shores and heard other tongues and been surrounded by the plurality of other faiths. But here in this time, they are gathered in a city where they can go back to the temple that is being rebuilt 
They can honor their own traditions of migration and pilgrimage and come back into the home that is the heart and the center of their faith. And they are surrounded by people that speak in all different kinds of languages and again live in all different corners of the world and come, come back to this place that should be home. And when this spirit descends on these people who are so uncertain, in a city that has crucified their leader. When they speak, God speaks through them, but he speaks, she speaks in the tongue that people from different parts of the world understand. And the outpouring doesn't stop with those few people gathered in that room. The crowds gather in and press in, and they spill out of the room out into the world because people are hearing their own language and they too are being filled with gifts of the spirit. Some people think that to prophesy means to tell the future. Maybe they should have foreseen 9-11, another earth shattering moment that will change all of us forever or the coming of plagues or COVID that sweep across the world and overturn everything we think we know. But to prophesy was not to tell the future. It was to look at the now. It was to look at where they were and to say God's love is not present always here, but it needs to come here. And so I will carry it with me in my body, in the way I speak, in the way I move, in the gifts that have been given to me to which I am accountable. I will see the world. I will see you and I will see you and you are my brother and you are my sister. And the things that have divided us cannot stand. The things that unify us must come to bring us together. Not making us one and the same, but recognizing the pluralism and the diversity that is our strength. That where we are vulnerable, this is where the light comes in. But that we can lean on each other's strength and we can hear each other's voices and each other's tongues and know each other's gifts. And that it is this diversity and plurality driven by the Holy Spirit that can unify us. Today is the birthday of the church. If Christ's message had ended when he left them, we wouldn't be sitting here, whether we're gathered by computer or gathered here in body in this church. There would not be such a church. There would not be such a movement. But the spirit didn't die with Christ. The spirit remains and connects all of us to love. And the people that received that spirit didn't have an easy road. They walked into places of peril because they were trying to change the world around them. It wasn't easy to go where the spirit might prompt them to go. But clearly they went and clearly we are here and we are gathered and people have walked the path and the road and they have passed along the gifts and received their own gifts from the spirit because here we are, we are gathered to celebrate this birthday. And we too know what it is like to have the world changed forever by the events that have happened in our own lives, sometimes our personal events. I can raise my hand and tell you that I have events in my life whose date I will never forget. Amazing events like the birth of my first daughter on April 17th that made us not just a couple, but parents and the beginning of a family the day my daughter was diagnosed with cancer, the day I heard my daughter sing in a church. I know these dates because they changed me. They're my personal Pentecosts, but we have national and international Pentecosts. Some of them have been incredibly destructive and others have changed us in ways that are not welcome, that we didn't choose and yet, this morning at eight o'clock, we started to talk about what are the gifts that we received out of this crazy year? What will we keep? 
What don't we want to lose? What has come into focus for us? What do we know now that we didn't know before? What do we cherish? Because it was removed from us, out of our reach. And now, now, as we slowly emerge, we can begin to touch these gifts again, but we are changed. Who in your life has had a moment that is a Pentecost moment? If you have, raise your hand and look around you and see that almost everyone here has had a time in their life when they have been changed. You are not alone in the anniversaries and the milestones, the positive ones and the most challenging and difficult ones that have transformed you. You are not alone because you have brothers and sisters, too, who have experienced transformation. And because in all of it, the Holy Spirit is present. And where the Holy Spirit did not create the change, the Holy Spirit has been the comforter and the guide that will give you the resources to make it through the change and bring you to the other side and remind you that you belong to each other. This church has its own birthdays. In 1803, the very first building was imagined for the triangle, but from 1803 to 1844, the people of the Adams Church of Christ, it was a free will Baptist church, met in each other's homes. And then they put up a little structure on what we call the historic triangle now. And then in 1847, they decided to build a second building, and it's the one that we're standing in and gathered in this morning, those of us who are here in body. And it still belonged to a free will Baptist church, but they reorganized themselves as a free will Baptist church of Jackson in 1855. And then in 1951, They chose to form a community church gathered under the New Hampshire Council of Churches, 1951. Our church is 70 years old as its own organized body this year. And then in 1981, we became part of the United Church of Christ, one of the youngest movements in the Christian movement at that time. There are birthdays for this little church, birthdays for our faith movement, birthdays that go back beyond our faith movement to the tradition upon which the apostles called when they spoke of Joel. And there are times and moments in every one of our lives when we have been changed. Today, when you wear red, let's do what we did at eight o'clock. Not all change is easy, and we're going through another one as we reemerge into this new world with work yet to be done, healing that must occur, peace that is in its infant stages in some parts of the world. Let us look at the experience that we have had. Let us let go of the things that we don't have to hold on to, but let us learn the lessons and receive the gifts of a transformation that none of us chose. And yet here we are, brothers and sisters, on the other side of that transformation, just like the transformation of Pentecost. And we have received gifts. We don't even recognize all of them yet. But the seeds that were sold at the plant sale are seeds of change and hope in different parts of the world, and they are seeds that we plant in ourselves too. And they will change us, and they will change the other people that we meet along the way. And the promise of Pentecost is that the gifts you need will come to you that the language that must be spoken to you so that you will know God's love 
will find you. And it may surprise you and it may not look like who or what you expect it to be. But God is going to meet you where you are and remind you that you belong first to God and God's love and then to each other. And God will be with you through all the changes yet to come. Let us receive the gifts and let us have the courage to be changed and to be the change that these gifts can make in the world. Thanks be to God. So the nice news as of last week is that if you're here in the sanctuary, you can sing behind your mask. And if you're in Zoom, you can sing as loudly as you want, unmasked. Alan will be playing One in the Spirit. The words will be up on the screen if you're in Zoom, or you will find them in the bulletin if you are in the pew. Go for it, Alan. Yeah, we need some upbeat. I did try to, I actually, Alan heard me. I tried to practice a horn. I was going to, you know, I was going to blow the Pentecost. And, and, and I have gotten a sound out of it a few times, but you have seen me try this before. Unless I keep practicing, this is not always a successful thing. So we're going to skip the horn today. You get, uh, well, okay, I'll try once, but if it doesn't play, we're not going to keep, because otherwise it's just me sputtering into it. That was an almost sound. That was sort of a kind of sound. Yeah, that was like a half, half sound. Okay, that's enough. You get the idea. We were going to do all kinds of sound effects, but instead, you've got each other's lively music and each other's voices. <laughs> and now we're going to sing the benediction and wish each other well, give each other peace, and then celebrate the remainder of this day. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.
brothers and sisters, and we will invite all those who are in Zoom to gather and chat with each other. We have one camera that can be aimed, <laughs> apparently aimed at me right now. Um, <laughs> Um, the, so if you want to, if you're here in the sanctuary and you want to join the folks in Zoom and say hello to them, you can do that. Uh, we'll use the, yeah, go for it, Alan, play us out. Mm -hmm.